U.S. economy is extremely dynamic. The, I mean, the only negative scenario that I could construct, and it's not my base case, I would just say the probability of it is not zero, is just that it, it looks like it's possible the U.S. economy is reaccelerating, and then maybe at some point inflation starts to go back up again, and the Fed has to raise rates again. Um, that's the only negative scenario I could see at this point. So where, where are you, Steve, on kind of your Fed call? Where do you think what do you think the Fed will do? What do you think it should do? I think the Fed should do nothing. Nice. You know, it, um, it engineered something pretty amazing, which is kind of shocking to everybody, including <laughs> me. The economy is good. You know, wh why would you? I mean, the, look, the worst case scenario for the Fed would be to actually, I think, cut rates the economy gets stronger, inflation comes back. Then you're then you're back into the Volcker situation of the early '80s. Yep. Yeah, the best thing to do would be just to pat yourself on the back, declare victory, and say we're completely data dependent. And if things start to weaken a little bit, they can always cut rates. Otherwise, you know, do nothing. So is that is that something when you say kind of wait? Is June waiting, or is even later in the year waiting for you? I, I don't know. I, I think at least till June. Okay. After that, you know, they probably do nothing anyway because they don't want to be accused of getting involved in an election. Right, right. right. Steve Eisen, we're celebrating Amazon into the Dow. I did a lot <laughs> of Dow mathematics uh, overnight, and it's so silly. It has a 15% tech exposure, including uh, tech exposure, including minuscule into Cisco, where the street is 27, 28% tech exposure as well. How do you approach this massive lifetime overweight in technology? Is there a derivative strategy? Is there a portfolio optimization you believe in? Well, I do think in overweighting or at least equal weighting tech is something you have to do. But I think there are some themes that are direct offshoots of tech that really should be examined by people that are not technically in tech. And so, for example, because of AI and the NVIDIA chips, which consume so much more electricity and are hotter, um, the grid has to be improved. Um, so there are companies that benefit enormously, from, construction companies that benefit enormously from that that are not tech companies. Uh, the data centers have to be cooled even more. So there are companies that provide those type of services that are going to do extremely well over the next couple of years. So there are offshoots from tech that are not technically <laughs> cute, technically tech that really should be looked at very close closely. So, Steve, I guess a lot of folks, I'd love to get your market call where you're seeing opportunity here, because, you know, one of the debates that we hear often is just do I stick and try to if I'm not there, get to the Magnificent Seven somehow, or do I try to find some values in other parts of the market? Maybe I've missed that trade. So coming out of 23, when it was such a hot close to the year, what do, what do you think about tech and being a leader in this market? You know, I think, look, I think we're in a bull market. In bull market, people love stories. They just latch onto stories. It's what they think about. It's what they dream about. And if you, if you can invest in something that has a story that people can really understand and get positive about, that's something to do. So tech is one such story. Yep. Infrastructure is a, is, a, is, a, is a similar kind of story that's going to last a long time. And there are a few others. And those are the things that I would focus on.